Okay, Zach. Thank you very much. You go in the middle. That's it. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. How are we all doing this morning? That's excellent. Before we get started, I'd just like to remind you all that there is to be no video of this uh, panel, no audio recording, and no flash photography. Any other kind of photography is totally fine, just as long as there's no flash. So we've got Quinton Flynn coming up very shortly, and we'll also have Beck standing out the front, ready to take your questions. So if anyone would like, a quest would like to pose their question to Quinton Flynn, please just queue up the front there, and we'll get underway. Excellent. Alrighty. And without further ado, I would like to introduce the man himself. Actually, I should probably introduce ourselves. That's a very good idea, I think good so. Good idea before yep. I miss that part. Brilliant. I am your host, Jake. And I am Zach. Great to see you all. And more importantly, we have the man, Quinton Flynn. Everyone give him a round of applause. <laughs> They're getting into it. Excellent. You ever get to, uh, to England and you're in Yorkshire, just when you walk in, you know, it's, hey, oh. All right, here we are. So we've got uh, one question out the front, but first of all, I've got a question for you, Quinton. Yeah, talk to me. I want to know what it was like for you working with your brother Bart on the Grim Adventures of Bill and Mandy. Wow, good question. Yeah, that was, that was really cool. Um, it, that, that may be one of the few times it's ever, ever happened. And... Uh, yeah, we were always cut-ups growing up together, uh, taking a piss, as you'd say. And um, so, yeah, it was great fun. Yeah. Did you awesome. get to interact much while you were doing all your recordings? Um, yeah, you're, you know, as actors in an animated series, you're in an ensemble, so you're sitting around mm -hmm. and uh, on your stools or standing. And so there were scenes where we'd have some back and forth. And then in between, when we're muted, then we're joking around in the booth. Oh, of course. You know, <laughs> when they can't hear us. So was it all fun and games then? Well, yeah. I mean, the acting part is acting, which is well, still it. fun. Yep. But yep. sure, I mean, both of us like to really, you know, take Have a bit of fun. Yeah. <laughs> Do you prefer tell. those uh, voice recording situations where you're uh, there with recording with other people or when you're more alone? Um, I love ensemble working. Yeah, working with a group. But um, I'm fine, you know, by myself. I, I'm okay playing with myself. <laughs> Wonderful. Excellent. What, what? Did I say something? <laughs> no, nothing at all. All right, I think we've got our first question ready up the front here. Jack, do you remember what day it is tomorrow? That's a good question, my friend. <laughs> good question is to you. Good for we you. First met. What's that? It's the day we first met. I love it. That would have been my answer. <laughs> the day we first met. By the Edit way, that. By the yeah. way, Paul Eating says hi. Sorry? Uh, Paul Eating says hi. Oh, Paul's great. Yeah, give him my love. Paul, uh, Paul uh, Eiding, he uh, played the Colonel in the Metal Gear series to my ah. right, and he's also originally from Cleveland, Ohio, which is where I was born as well. Oh, cool. Yeah. So, huge Metal Gear Solid fan. I was wondering, what was the voice direction like for the first time you took on such a new character? Obviously, Raiden was a dramatic change from Solid Snake, so I was wondering what was the direction like, whether that came from Kojima himself or... Well, yeah, Kojima, uh, you know, he's obviously in charge of everything, so word runs down to all the characters and how he'd like them to be played. Um, I auditioned for the character and took their feedback. Once I got the role and I was in the booth, um, I just kind of rolled with it, and I hadn't played the first Metal Gear, so I didn't know who Snake was. I didn't know the background. Um, I just knew, you know, be better than him. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> all right, our next question, please. Hi, Quentin. Um, basically, my question is, were you nervous when you first started voice acting, and, how, and how, how did you cope? Yes, I was nervous when I started voice acting. And when I first heard myself recorded back on a cartoon series or a commercial, it was so surreal. You know, it's like hearing this disembodied voice. And I was extremely self-critical because it was so new. I wasn't familiar with it. Um, but over time, I got used to it. In the beginning, I didn't have any coping mechanisms. I, I just went, ah! That sounds horrible. <laughs> oh, jeez, people are going to hate me. And then eventually I went, that's brilliant. This guy's just brilliant. <laughs> Piece of art, really. Australia. He's so brilliant. Yeah. Excellent. Again, Thanks you the question. Laugh. These are really dry jokes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not that arrogant yet. <laughs> cool. Next up. Yeah. 
Hey there, Quentin. Hey. I uh, was just wondering, with all of your voice acting talent, is there a particular voice that you love whenever it comes to voice acting, whenever it comes to improvisation? Uh, I love doing Paul McCartney, you know, Sir Paul from the <laughs> Beatles. You might have heard of him. Yeah, I've been on tour for the last 28 years. <laughs> Won't stop. So yeah, I, that makes me happy because I'm a real Beatle head. Uh, I love doing impressions on uh, Billy and Mandy you talked about. Um, I was cast to play a snake who was an attorney and uh, they wanted me to do him as Christopher Walken. So it was like, Judge. <laughs> a classic no, impression. You're out of order. <laughs> so yeah. Love it. Wonderful. Next question. I have two things to say. What do you, first of all, I brought you a present for here. A gift from us from South Australia to uh, you. Oh, bless you. Oh, isn't that nice? All right, well, I'm going to come And what down. do you think about, how do you feel about Axel from Kingdom Hearts? What do you like about him and that? What makes you so connected to him and even his, even his original self, Lee? Well, I love Axel's hair. Yeah. yeah, he's got rock and roll hair. And back in the <laughs> 80s, when my hair was longer, it was like that. Now it's just short and spiky, yeah. But it still, it still hurts if I poke you. Do I want a what? Yeah, it doesn't matter. Go ahead. So take a moment, everybody. Get comfortable with this. What should I do, smile or no smile? <laughs> smile? Okay. <laughs> Obviously, this is taking a little bit longer than we thought. Yeah, oh, just a oh, little I bit. Now brief brief detail. Picture. Okay. Nice. How about that? Thank you. Wonderful. Beautiful. Let's give it up for her. Huh? What's your name? Amy. 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 Yeah, right. Well, it's a pleasure to meet you, love. All the best. Cheers. Yeah. Now I'm going back on the catwalk because I am a professional model. <laughs> that's the way oh, we Oh, that's walk. beautiful. On the mm. catwalk. <laughs> <laughs> nice turn. You've got that down pat. Well, I learned that what you do, and anyone can do this, all you have to do when you're walking is squeeze your butt cheeks when you walk. That's it. And it looks like you either have to go to the bathroom <laughs> or you're a professional asshole. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Thank not, you. Not the type of advice I was expecting during this battle, I'll admit. You never know, you know, I got so many uh, thoughts and information. It's wonderful. <laughs> Full of surprises. Goes. Excellent. Well, it looks like there's um, no one in the line at the moment. Please, if anyone else have, has any questions for Quentin, please head on up and get them ready. Yeah. Uh, on the topic of uh, working with Kojima, um, he's known to be quite an eccentric personality. I was wondering what, what it was like working with him. Well, he was in Japan all of the time, so mm. they had someone who was an intermediary yep. to be able to chat with us in American and speak to someone in Japan if they needed additional direction or change. So he and I have never been in the same room at the same time, which could mean that we are the same person. <gasps> Oh my god. I dun, think it's dun, proof dun. actually. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Wonderful. So how do you go about um, taking direction when it is so um, impersonal, when you do have that barrier? Oh, well, I mean, it's, I, I do get it from a director. Mm. So, oh. you know, it, like, it's filtered down or fed down. So the, I'm getting direct direction from a director that I'm used to working with. And Chris Zimmerman was the director on the Metal Gear series. And I'd also worked with her on the Adventures of Johnny Quest. And I played Johnny. Come on, Dad, we gotta go find Bandit. <laughs> and so she was quite, you know, make sure Quentin. Let's not get too young. We don't want to go Johnny. That's She's like, it. too Johnny, you know. <laughs> and there's also by Metal Gear Rising: Revengeance. There was good riding and bad riding. That's it. Yeah. Right. So there's Jack, you know, who might be talking to the Colonel. Yes, I understand. That's what we have to do. Yes, Mr. President, not a problem. That's good, Jack, or good riding. Yeah. And she'd say, bad riding. It was like, now it's time for Jack to let her rip. <laughs> so you could see it's that was it, yeah. duplicitous. Lovely. Yeah. Cool. It looks like we've got some people queuing up now. So if you'd like to ask your question, fire away. Hi, Quentin. Hi there. How are you? Good. Um, I was wondering, what's your favorite thing about voicing Silver the Hedgehog? And what can we expect to see in Sonic Forces if you're allowed to talk about it? My favorite thing is his hair, which is why mine is silver. <laughs> yeah, and spiky, yeah. <laughs> We're answer. kind of in love. Um, you know, um, I don't know. I just like his attitude, you know? It's no use, but it really is use. You're useful. You're useful. We're all useful. Come on! Excellent. That's it. Wonderful. I like the energy. I like the fun, you know? Uh, I just dig him. He looks so cool. That's it. They are cool characters. Amazing. 
All right, we've got our next question. Hi, um, I've got a sort of Square enix -y question. Did you prefer voicing Axel or, or Reno? Reno? I knew that was coming somehow. <laughs> um, I, you know, it's tough. I, I, I don't know that I prefer one over the other. I've obviously done more as Axel. Um, I personally feel a little closer to Reno because he's kind of sarcastic, uh, like me. So <laughs> I like taking the piss, so any chance I get, you know. Reno, you know, he thinks he's a badass, and he does the best he can, but as we saw in Final uh, uh, Fantasy Advent Children, he and Rude, they were the comic relief. So that's what I like, somebody who really thinks they're doing it right, and then they screw up. Like, I think he stepped on Rude's glasses, right? <laughs> so a bit of... Oh, was it? I think it was Laws, yeah. Ah, well, I was Possibly. wrong. Uh, see, I'm happy to be corrected. I take direction well. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to change Excellent. my answer. Uh, and that was he probably thought it was funny that Rude's glasses got stepped on. Because it's one upmanship. It's kind of like, you know, brothers or siblings. You know, one wants to be better than the other. Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. You're welcome. Good question. <laughs> was. Hey, how's it going? It's going uh, well, Mike. Wow, look at you. It's riding. I'm looking at myself. <laughs> <laughs> um, any news on a new Metal Gear Rising game? Uh, no, 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 unfortunately. When we were recording Metal Gear Rising Revengeance, uh, they had told me at that time that there, we were looking at a sequel. And right. I was thrilled. And I said, how long? They said, probably within the next two years. Right. But you guys can do the math. When did Rising come out? What does mean? 2013. There we go. He's on it. Yeah, and so we're in right. 2017. Mm. So, yeah, it's been I a don't while. know. I mean, More they, than two. I think they have a problem with math. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Counting to so four. Yeah. <laughs> or two for that uh, matter. Yeah, so we're hoping, I mean, we all hope for it one day, but it's because of the, the problems between uh, Kojima and uh, Konami. You know, he doesn't own the rights, so he can't do anything with it. Mm, exactly. And I don't know that they will, but we all hope that one day that will happen. And I would love to see not only a sequel to the game, but I would love a series. Oh, you heck know, yeah. an animated series. That'd be awesome. Be amazing. Yeah, yeah that so, would be fantastic. That's my Thank two cents. Sure. Awesome. Cool. You look great, by the way. <laughs> Thanks for your question. And I'm not saying that because I want to sleep with you. Let's be clear <laughs> about that. We're friends here, and this is family friendly. That's it. Of course. Yeah. Do we have another question? Hey, I have a question for you for the upcoming Kingdom Hearts 3 game. Yeah, oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> what, what will we expect for Lee in the game? You know, I honestly don't know, truthfully because we actors are the last to be given the information and brought in for the recording session. We're really kind of the uh, icing on the cake or the cherry on top, and they refuse to give us any information. And then once we're brought in for the recording session, I'm only given the scenes in which I'm working. So it's, it's a non-linear process. It's not A through Z. It, we might go B, F, Z, A, C, G, in terms of a storyline. And um, even once I'm recording and done, I don't know a whole lot, and what I do, I'm not allowed to reveal. They make us sign non-disclosure agreements mm -hmm. so that nothing escapes, so that it could be a surprise to you guys when the game comes out. Hmm. I've got a follow-up question for that, Quinton. Sure, sure. So in that scenario, do you then try to piece a story together from the recording session or do you just wait until the final product's out and then you see what has become of it? Yeah, I, I don't try to piece anything together. I just, you know, get uh, a lot of clarity about where we are, what we're doing in the moment and yep. what I need to deliver to make the story work. Yep. And I do have a sense moment to moment of what's happening, absolutely. Um, but after the fact, no, there's no way I could make heads or tails of it until it comes Fair out. enough. Yeah. That's it. All right, next question, please. Hello. Hey, good to see you, mate. No, yeah, see, see, you too. Um, my question is that um, I spoke to the other um, special guests um, that came to AFCON about their tales of um, getting involved with pranks or getting pranked by another um, voice actor. Uh, have you uh, ever um, get done pranks or got pranked by someone? Um, I haven't been pranked by anyone in my profession, um, but I was doing a show in Wichita, Kansas. It was an 18-plus panel in which we were talking about David Hayter, and I said, I could call him right now if you'd like me to. And he's the voice of Snake to my riding. So I did call him up, and someone was recording in the audience that night, and it's up on YouTube, and it says, Quentin Flynn pranks David Hayter. Uh, I didn't consider it a prank. I was just calling him you know, to be uh, kind to the audience and to see if we could get him to say hello, and he eventually did. Excellent. But, uh, yeah, so it was awesome. 
Uh, the only thing I think of doing sometimes is when I'm going through a takeaway uh, drive through lane, you know, as we, in the States we call it drive through to get food, and I can't understand what the person is saying on the microphone. <laughs> so when they're like, uh, you know, uh, what, what can I get you? I'm I'd like a cheeseburger, Coke, and fries. Can you get that one? Excuse me? Get that one. Cheeseburger, fries, and a Coke. Get that one. Okay, I'd like to go down to the house. Okay, one cheeseburger, fries, and a Coke coming <laughs> That's up. That's it. <laughs> so, yeah, that works. Excellent. So, uh, thank you. Thank you. And cool. thank you. He gave me uh, some Tim Tams and a bit of Vegemite last night. Ah. Yeah. The most Australian it, gift. Yeah. Iconic. You guys taking care of me. Everybody, you guys are wonderful. It's so good to be in Australia. We're glad to hear it. Thank yeah. you. Excellent. Cheers. Cool. Next question, please. Hi, you should totally say something Aruka would say. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear that. You should totally say something Aruka would say. Oh, to you? Yes. What's your name? Uh, well, my name's Cat. Cat? Like a cat? <laughs> <laughs> yeah? Okay. Cat, you've got a big future. Now, normally I don't say this, but I think that you could actually supersede Naruto. So if you do this right, I'm going to take you out to get you some ramen. Cat, Excellent. you're not doing it right, cat. Cat! <laughs> there you go. Beautiful. Amazing. Thank, Thank you. Love it. Round of applause. Thank you Thanks. so much. I'm so grateful for that. You guys are beautiful. <laughs> oh, this man's covered in blood. Everybody, beware, beware. Most excellent. Medic? Medic? Too bad you don't recognize me, huh? I, I don't. Uh, oh, yes, I do. You're my cousin Franklin. You, you, you followed me here, you stalker. <laughs> No, no, from yesterday. Yeah. Uh, no, I don't. Wait, I do. Yeah, because you had to leave. Your mom was calling. Yes. It's true. <laughs> Pretty good, right? <laughs> I'm a detective on the side. <laughs> anyway, um, I forgot to ask you this yesterday, but how many impressions have you actually fit your own personal humor into? How many impressions have you fit your own personal humor into? Uh, 1,427. A lot. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I love doing impressions. I started doing impressions when I was eight years old. Amazing. I do them all the time, and the longer I'm sitting around someone, uh, I, I just record it, you know? And I think as a kid, I started out as all of us did just drawing randomly. You draw what you'd see. And once I got into the performing arts, um, I had been recording with my mind images and sounds and sight, and so then I just start replicating it like a parrot. And it's just a natural thing I have. That's so. it. So do you prefer to then uh, portray characters that reflect your character, or are you happy to kind of like step outside what you might not necessarily be comfortable with? Um, I, I like either or both. Yep. Uh, again, with Reno, Ryden, and Axel, they're much closer to my natural speaking voice. So it's funny to me when people come up and say, you know, that really sounds like you. Because it really it does, is. yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. As opposed to when I do Timon, which is you know Nathan Lane, it's Akuna Matata. Yeah, what a wonderful it. phrase! Come on, Pumba. Then you know, that's not Quentin Flynn. No, no, of course. In any way, shape, or form. Um, so I do love doing the impressions process because it is so much fun to do that and create and change and kind of channel that spirit and energy, and people go, "Whoa!" But then it's also fun to be me, to be in the moment where stuff comes out just like in real life. Life really is about, it's really improv. We don't know what's gonna happen exactly next. Exactly right. And then suddenly within a take that's being recorded, they go, that was it. And I go, what was it? I don't you know don't what I was know. doing. <laughs> yeah, that's that's they go, it. the thing, I go, what's the thing? They go, the real thing, that natural thing that we wanted you to do that you didn't know you could do. <laughs> Whoa. Surprise. <laughs> Metaphysical, philosophical, <laughs> psychologically disturbing. <laughs> Excellent. All right, we've got another question up here. Hello. Hi there, mate. <laughs> um, I wanted to ask, with the character Raiden, there is, uh, it was received a certain way by the audience initially. <laughs> yeah, not well. Were you, <laughs> <laughs> well, you pretty much answered my question. I was going to ask if you were aware of how that went down and how it's changed now. Yeah, I wasn't aware at the time. Um, there wasn't as much action on uh, social media back then. This was 2001, I believe. Yeah, I think when it came out. So someone did ask me your question in an interview, and I had no clue. So all I was aware of was that like, there were a bunch of angry fans who were hoping to play through Snake, 
And then this char new character, Raiden, pops up that was a secret, right? Kind of like an Easter egg. Hmm. And uh, I'm like, how do you feel about that they don't like the character? I go, I don't know. Uh, I, don't, I like him because it's me. <laughs> and over the years, how that has changed is there have been some people who would come right up to me and go, I hated your character. I hated him. And over time, it's, you know what? Other people really didn't like your character, but I always liked you from the start. <laughs> So that, that's how it's changed. And some have said, who had never played the Metal Gear series, that they played that first and they loved it. So I'm cool with it. You know, it's like anything. You know, you, might, you and I might love one band, and we could play it for one of our friends, and they might hate it. So it's really subjective. Yeah, so I, can't, I don't take it personally. Yeah. So by the way, did you like him? You always liked him. Oh, yeah. See? There we go. There we go. Fantastic. We're heading out to the pub later. Join us. <laughs> Riding fans Cheers. only. Yeah. Right. Thanks so much for your question. Do we have another one? Hello again. Um, I was wondering, I'm actually kind of training to be a voice actor. I was wondering what any advice you could give me or anyone else in the room, like advice you could give us about voiceover. Yes. <clears throat> Drink lots of scotch, uh, gargle with razor blades, <laughs> and never get any rest. It's exactly the opposite of what you want to be doing. <laughs> he got I it. <laughs> um, acting is acting is acting. So even though there's the word voice in front of acting or voiceover, people have this strange uh, misconception that it's not acting because they're used to seeing people on TV, on the big screen, you know, or uh, on, on the stage like this, and they think, well, this is acting. You know, and if the camera's close enough on my face, if I just dart my eyes to the left or to the right, I might look menacing. Well, the thing is, in voice acting, you are actually uh, working the microphone. So we're doing the acting as I'm doing it right now, and I'm having an intimate conversation with you. But if suddenly I had to get angry at you and said, I need you to step back from me, what happens is I need to know that I have to back off the microphone for volume because the intensity of that could blow out the volume of the speakers. In fact, it might make it go into the red, and then there'd be distortion. So as far as voice acting goes, you and your voice as an instrument, you need to be able to protect it, know your range from as high as you can go to as low as you can go. <laughs> and as low as I can go, I'm practically eating the microphone. <laughs> but if I'm going higher, then I have to step back. And what I would suggest is just room temperature water regularly, no cold water. Uh, try to stay away from caffeine and warm teas, non-caffeinated preferably. If you're doing a yelling scene, you'll eventually find a sweet spot in your voice, in your body, in which to be able to make that yell without hurting your voice. And if you're in a session recording and it starts to hurt or you feel fatigue, take a time out. And it's always okay to ask. So always ask questions, especially if you're given a piece of direction that you don't understand. When I was um, acting in my early days, they might give me a piece of direction that I wouldn't understand, but because I didn't want to look stupid, I would just nod my head and do the take. And then they'd look at me and they'd say, okay, we need you to do it again. <laughs> and uh, it would take a bit longer. So now if I get it, I'm so used to the way they describe and direct, I just go, oh yeah, got, got it. And other times, if I don't, I humbly say, could you make that a little clearer? I'm not sure I understand what you're saying. The good news is, they're happy to do it because they want the end product to be amazing. So they're happy to help you, just like a kind teacher, you know? And so I would say, ask questions like you're doing with me now. I've just given you some really good information to take home and uh, just keep doing your homework. Never stop acting, never stop learning, never stop playing, because acting truly is playing. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Wonderful. Thanks so much for your question. Next one, thanks. Um, I'm not sure how many people have seen this, but there's a YouTube video that I particularly like is um, you were part of this voice panel where you read the script of Star Wars using your voice characters. Yes. A particular highlight, I thought, was an exchange between Han and Luke where you were Raiden and Phil Lamar was Bamp. I yes. thought that was particularly funny. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I just wanted to ask, uh, 
how good is it to be able to get together with your fellow voice actors in such a way and you know have a, have an opportunity to have fun like that? Oh, it's wonderful. Um, I love Phil, and uh, it's it's just great fun because you know in the, when we're in the studio recording the original characters, we have to do what's on the page. In between, Phil and I actually would be doing impressions with with each other because we love doing that. But at that particular convention where we are taking on those roles and getting to read them, then he and I also tend to improvise. So it's great fun. Yeah. Love it. Love it. Love it. <laughs> Wonderful. Thanks so much for your question. Hi. Um, Hi. First of all, I just wanted to say thank you for your performance in Metal Gear Rising. Thank Basically you. because oh, when you turned on the Jack the Ripper, impression yeah. yes. that that game just became so much more amazingly ridiculous it's yeah. not funny now my question in particular isn't really directed towards you but it's more about you i happen to know that a streamer was playing your game last year by the name of vine sauce vinny oh yeah he was supposed to do an interview with you um yes from uh, i believe he met you in an elevator or something at the new york comic con did that ever actually happen it hasn't happened yet and if you guys don't mind, I'm going to take off my jacket. It's very hot up here. It's getting hot in here, so take off all your clothes. I'm taking, I'm taking, I'm taking off my jacket, that's all. If you want to see me take off any other clothes, you have to go to the uh, Crazy Horse tonight and pay money. That's it. Everyone get your cameras ready. <laughs> so, uh, no, to answer your question, I have uh, not been able to get back to Vinny about doing that interview. And you're one of a number of people that have brought this up to me, and I go, oh, I got to get back to him. So it's going to happen. I just, you know, I have to make time for it. He's a really great guy. New York Comic Con, that's where it was, in October. He is, but I think he's a bit lazy as well. No, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously? Do you know him? I know enough about him, let's just say. Really? <laughs> what's your name again? I forget. Josh. What's your last name? Eason. Josh Eason? Yes. Cool. I'm going to make sure I tell him you said that. No worries, I might tweet it at him no. or email him. He's yeah, got no. it all there. Oh, so you guys are pals. No, he's just got it all there. So, you know, you can just shoot it off. He might have to go through a million. Because oh, just give him the love, baby. It's all good. <laughs> right. he's got, I mean, it's so hard. The thing is, when we're doing these projects and everybody has expectations, it's really not him. I'll be honest, it's been me. I just, I've not been able to get back to him uh, because of work commitments and traveling. Yeah. And I was ill for a while because I had done so many pole dances. I just got sick. <laughs> oh, that's understandable. Tiring yeah. stuff. It is tiring. <laughs> no, well, yeah, thanks again for uh, Jack the Ripper again. Thank you, my um, friend. I am no lightning the rain transformed, and you I will never let down. <laughs> Excellent. <It> means, Jack. <laughs> Cheers, thanks baby. Thanks for your question. Let's keep the ball rolling. Hi again. Uh, Hi. My second question is, when you voice a character for one studio, how hard is it to do another character from, from another studio? Um, I'm confused by the question. Could you re repeat? Like when you're voicing a character in a company, how hard is it to, to do another character from the other one? You mean like if I'm doing two different recording sessions? Yeah, in two like, different studios? Yeah, two, two different studios. Um, like I said before, acting is acting is acting. Um, it's not difficult for me at all because if they're casting me, they want what I do. And so if they want what I do, I've got what they want. And if I've got what they want, then I'm going to give it to them. That's it. <laughs> That's it. So it's pretty easy. Cool. Yeah. Thanks for your question. The toughest part to do as a voice actor, convincingly, is mime work. Mm. <laughs> don't have to do much at all. Yeah. <laughs> all right, next question. Good morning, Quinton. Good um, morning. I've, I uh, started Metal Gear Solid with Metal Gear Solid 2, so it was my first one. I loved it. I haven't played number four yet, but I have played Rising, and I loved it. And I wanted to know, how did you feel about going from someone that a lot of people hated number two yeah. to suddenly being this kick-ass cyborg? <laughs> I loved it. <laughs> Just like you, I loved it. I don't know. It was fun. It was a great challenge, fun to transfer, because I did become this world-weary, war-torn cyborg ninja. And, um, you know, because anyone who's directing you is trying to clarify what they want, they're, they're trying to get you to do what they want to be done, and so being able to satisfy their requests and needs with my own artistic interpretation uh, is a great thing when we come together in a happy medium that just rocks. So I loved the change in transition, 
And by the time we got to Rising Revengeance, it was, there was even more of a differentiation. And I got to really own it. And by that time, they trusted me so much that I got to kind of add some things and improvise a bit, and maybe throw in a little comedy underneath uh, because they trusted that I am Jack. Awesome. Fantastic. And before I go, could you just talk about maybe make a quick spin off line about Senator in um, Bad Jack voice? Uh, would just make something up? Improvise about the Senator? Okay, I gotta, I gotta be careful here. Because I know it's family friendly. I think I've already sworn at least once. So if I'm improvising about the Senator, uh, let me think. I don't know if I'm, I'm not gonna think. You know what, Senator? I'm going to drop you like a bad bag of Tim Tams and crush you <laughs> on the street. Then I'm going to take one end of you, bite off the top, and suck coffee right through your head. He knows how it goes. How's that? <laughs> that was beautiful. It's a great departure for the series, I think. <laughs> Excellent. All right, our next question, please. Uh, hi, uh, I was just wondering if you have a favorite and possibly a least favorite character you've played. Um, no, no. <laughs> to be truthful, uh, no. Uh, I, every character I get to play I love. I'm very happy to do it. I always want to do my best. And um, as far as favorites go, it's always the one that I'm doing at the time. So what, do you have a favorite of mine? That's my favorite too. Isn't that weird? Yeah. He said Raiden. Um, yeah, no, I love Raiden. I love Reno. I love Axel. Jin the Virtuoso. Is anybody familiar with him? Yeah, we got one person out there. Yeah, two? Okay. Right on. Three? Yeah, it's growing. By the time I come back here next year, you'll be like, nobody knew who Jin was. I knew who you were all the time. <laughs> awesome. Thanks for your question. Thank you. All right, next up. Hey, wait a minute. You could actually be up here with these fellas. He could. Yeah, he right. very well could be. Yeah. But he's not this time around. What no. is your question, Marcus? So you've played Paul McCartney a couple of times in live action. I did, yeah. Is he your favorite Beatle or the one you thought would be most fun to play? Um, Paul has always been my favorite Beatle, although I do love John. And he and I were born years apart, but one day apart. John Lennon was October 9th, I'm October 10th. So I do love John Lennon as well. He's a bit more nasal. Yelko's a supreme genius. That's why I went out with the, the rest of the Beatles were jealous. And then Excellent. George might say, you know, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, it's good to be here. John, you know, you should just relax a little bit. You might take in more meditation. Ringo would say, peace and love, peace and love, no more autographs. <laughs> and, uh, the reason I'd play Paul for the on camera is because I happen to resemble McCartney a little bit more. You know, if you look at my face and my features, you know, the eyes and the nose and the, the mouth's a bit smaller. So I couldn't do John, even though I like to do John. They wouldn't let me because I don't look like him. Yeah, but I think Paul and John together, like if you say, who's your favorite Beatle? I'd say John and Paul. Because together, what they did as songwriters, they really complemented one another. And Paul was always known as the softer of the two, and John the sharper. But the truth is, they both had those same characteristics that were woven into their songs. It's just that publicly, John had no filter and would tell you everything he was thinking about his life Whereas Paul was a bit more of a professional showman who was also aware of marketing and would keep things to himself. Mm, a bit more reserved. A bit more reserved. And you, 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 you would be hard pressed to find an interview anywhere on the net and hear Paul McCartney cursing. Mm. Whereas with John, you know, no worries. No, that's it. <laughs> yeah. Exactly right. So it's fascinating. But yeah, good question. I'm, I'm obsessed with the Beatles since I was a kid and I just... I love and know so much about them. The same way many of you know about Reno, Raxel, Reno, Axel, and Ryden. <laughs> Raxel. I've Raxel. created a new character. New character, right there. <laughs> My name is Raxel. I'm a rascal. Yeah. <laughs> He's wor I'm working on it already. Play. What do you want to do? Who's your favorite Beatle? <laughs> do you have one? Do you like Paul McCartney? What is your name? I'm going to eat you. I'm Raxel. Ah! Oh, that was brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> and that's acting right there. That's acting. Got it memorized. Excellent. <laughs> I think we're watching history be made. Yeah, Wonderful. that's it. All right, thanks for your question, Marcus. What have we got next? Uh, my question is about League of Legends and Jin. Yes. Um, I understand the character was changed when they were developing him. 
Yes, it's true. Uh, did that change your voice acting at all, like the script for it? It did. They actually, uh, they, wa they, they wanted uh, his vocal range to change in terms of age. And then the dir direction they gave me, and this is unusual, they gave me four video clips to look at. Kevin Spacey from the movie Seven, Michael C. Hall from Dexter, Anthony Perkins from Alfred Hitchcock's original movie Psycho, and the Bond villain from Skyfall. And they said to me, look at all of these video clips because they all have elements of what we'd like to see and hear in gin. And I said, well, we can do that if you just give me a bottle of gin. <laughs> it will be so easy, it will be effortless. But uh, no, what I did is I studied those clips and then I worked up impressions of each of these gentlemen in their performances. Then I kind of stirred it around and I made my own gin soup, if you will. And I kind of filtered it through my being to come up with the gin malevolent voice that I like so well. To look at you and maybe you as you're looking at your phone. <laughs> that is disturbing, isn't it? What do you think I might do to someone who's not looking at me when I'm talking to them? Something crazy? Something unnerving? Maybe I would dance on their shoulders. Maybe I would crush their skull. Maybe I would drink that which emanates from their pores. I like your shirt. I think you should give it to me. <laughs> so villains don't know they're villains. As I did that, I was enjoying every moment, but as I noticed the hush in the room, it was suddenly apparent to me that people were wondering what's going on. <laughs> oh no, now I'm Gene Wilder in Young Frankenstein. <laughs> Help me, get me out of this room, you idiots. I was joking, it's a monster. Abby who? Abby, uh, Abby who? Did Abby, you? Abby normal. Abby, Abby normal. normal. Are you saying you, I put the brain of an abnormal person into the body of a seven foot, 250 pound monster? Oh, brilliant. Thank you. Excellent, love it. All right, next question, please. How are you? My question sort of got answered. Uh, my girlfriend's a big fan of you. Um, yes. Is she? What's her name? Millie. The girl in Millia? the white jumper. Millie. Stand up. <laughs> hey, love. <laughs> there is no place I know that compares with your imagination. Come with me and you'll be in a world beyond your imagination. Living there, you'll be free to see your boyfriend is coming <laughs> to take a picture of you and me. You only wish to be. <laughs> that is a great Gene Wilder. Such a beautiful number. Thank you. Exactly. Oh, that was beautiful. Thank you. Excellent. So there are questions. Your question. oh, your <laughs> <laughs> I'm in love with your girlfriend. Sorry. sorry a bit distracted. <laughs> mine. I'm, I'm sorry. I can't share. That's okay. I don't mind. I don't mind. Um, be previous, before Riot Games approached you, was there any other companies that approached you, like uh, Dota and Smite and stuff like that, to voice act for them? Which, I'm sorry, oh well. I'm no, not, he, I'm not a f I don't really know too much about you, sorry. I'm just here because of her. That's okay. I just found out you voiced No, no, she's, it's obvious she's, she's a genius. Yeah. Yeah, it's obvious. So stick with her. Um, no, the way it works is with these companies, uh, as an actor, we're given opportunities. So an audition will come down the line and I'll audition for a role. Only occasionally will a company contact my agent and ask, to book me directly for a role. So if it's something I'm right for, I'm happy to do it. And if I'm auditioning, then kind of the company brand, it doesn't necessarily matter to me in, in as much as I want to know what their style is so that I provide a performance stylistically that will work well for them. You got it, mate. Thanks so much for your question. Do we have another one? Um, I was wondering, how did you evolve the character of Axel throughout the series, considering he's changed quite a bit since his first uh, inclusion in the series? Well, part of that happened with the way in which they wrote the script, changed, and adapted through the story changes. And, you know, w as I said before about Raiden and how he changed, I think in any series, if you notice the, how an actor performed early on compared to the middle 
of the, season, uh, uh, the, the series or the end, they g grow, change, and shift. Again, for the reasons that the story changes, they want to keep things fresh, and also because I've been playing him long enough, they allow me to live in that body and skin and they trust me more, so I have more of a spin on it, a bit more of control later on and than I did in the beginning. Awesome. I We've feel only like a got professor. <laughs> I really do. It's like That's science, it. right? That's it. Which I was never good at. Just a reminder as well, there's just over ten minutes left, so if anyone wants to try and squeeze in their questions, just line up out the front. You want to get in those special questions. Hey, nothing is sacred. Hey, hey. So I was wondering, with Metal Gear Solid 2, yeah. what was it like going from the more obedient Raiden to the more, like, well, in the simulation Raiden? So trying to figure out what Colonel's going on about. Um, well, I, I don't know. That's an excellent question. I, and, I, and really, not to put you on the spot, but what, what, what is the difference for you as the player? I think it's more or less going from such a serious game to such a out there sort of switch in direction, especially for Raiden. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of the same for me. I mean, again, because I'm doing it moment to moment, it's not that unusual. What is unusual is changing the pacing, changing the emotions, uh, the redirects, where I might be comfortable in a flow in one particular area, and then I do have to change. Um, it, you know, it just takes some adjusting. But I know when you're playing a game, it can seem radically different quickly. So not as disturbing for me as it is for you. That's what I'm <laughs> Cool, thanks for your question. Next up. Hello again. Um, Hello. Welcome. I had a thought. How was it trying to voice someone who has no emotion? Well, who are you Axel. talking? You mean Quentin? Me? Yeah, no. <laughs> A who, Axel? Yeah, like how he was, how he's a nobody and sort of how they're not supposed to have emotions. How was it trying to do that and then having them slowly develop emotions anyway? That's a good question. Again, it was part of the process. And um, based on my interpretation and the director's direction, um, I don't know. Uh, I guess it was only challenging in as much as they would ask me to give them less, you know, uh, in terms of a performance. And doing less, it feels like you're not doing anything. But oddly enough, when they play the record back and you hear it, you go, oh, there is something to that nothing. You know? Yeah. How about that? Think on that for a while. Good question, good answer. It's Amy again, the one that gave you the little Axel figurine. I, uh, I'm not taking any more photos, but I want to ask. You did, I heard you once voiced a character in the Crash Bandicoot games, Engine, in Crash Twin Sanity. What did you think of that? I thought it was wonderful. It was based <laughs> on Howard Cosell, who was an announcer from the 1970s on Wide World of Sports, who used to interview Muhammad Ali. And he loved the champ. And he loved talking about American football with Frank Gifford. And Don, dandy Don Meredith. So I loved being Howard Cosell in the form of a, a bird who was wearing a blazer and holding a microphone, calling all the shots on the game. I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that bus by all those TNT crates. He fell, got chased by a walrus. Bang, 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 bang. Well done. That's it. <laughs> Thanks for your question. Thank you. No worries. Uh, hey, um, I should have asked this. Sorry, I uh, should have asked this last night. But um, I want to ask, uh, what was your inspiration behind Sheldon uh, from My Life as a Teenage Robot? Like, where'd you get that voice from? Excellent question. Um, Sheldon from My Life as a Teenage Robot talked like this, and he was in love with Jenny, who was a robot. And my inspiration for that was um, a comedian, a legendary comedian, Jerry Lewis. Does anyone, by a show of applause, know who Jerry Lewis is? Then we all know that Jerry Lewis, you know, when he was like the youngest Jerry Lewis, he would kind of talk like this and kind of boy-like, like, Dean, where are we going? Dean, do you think I can get the girl this time? No? Oh, boy. Oh, I've got an idea. I'd love your hair. If I could just fix it, I would touch the thing with the moving around, and then I'd go, oh, whoa, hi. So it was my impression of Jerry Lewis from the time I was a kid that I looked at this character of Sheldon, 
and I just kind of put the voice in here and they want him a bit nerdy, but then I wanted to give him a bit more love, so Sheldon came from my love of Jerry Lewis. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. There you go. Beautiful. My people, <laughs> I want to take you home with me, put you in my pocket so that I'm not alone at night when I go to bed. <laughs> All right, baby. <laughs> Excellent. Next question. Hello. Stop looking at my bum. <laughs> I can't help Hello. it. I was wondering what it was like to work with the World of Warcraft team when you were voicing over Kalthus. Um, wonderful. Uh, love Kalthus. And love your outfit, by the way, everybody. Look at that, huh? I want hair like that. I just do. Yeah. Um, it was terrific. Prince Kalthus is very regal, you know, and had a lot of power. The team was and is terrific over at Blizzard. So we first did World of Warcraft, and then just a couple of years ago, I got to reprise the role in uh, Heroes of the Storm, which was a real joy, and especially for fans. Are you a fan? Yeah. Um, they loved it and want more. And I say, write to Blizzard, tell them to create a spin-off for Prince Kael'thas so we can have our own series of games and or animated. What do you say? Yes. Yeah! That's what we want. Hey, oh! Hey, oh! All right. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you, baby. Well, it looks like that's the end of the line. Does anyone else have any more questions? If so, please make your way up. There's still about just under 10 minutes left of this panel, so we definitely have more time for more questions. In the meantime, I have a question of my own. Shoot, I'm, baby. I'm wondering, uh, is there a big difference in your approach when recording something quite story-driven, like a video game or, or TV show, as opposed to something like, um, or like for uh, Heroes of the Storm? Uh, where it would be more individual sound bites without a lot of character development. Do you have a different kind of process approaching those types of roles? Between that and what, like a Metal Gear series or something? Yeah, just something that has a story where the character yeah. is expected to change over the course of the... Oh. Mm. Um, ye, you know, oddly enough, uh, I think it is more challenging to do fewer roles for... A I'm sorry, fewer lines of dialogue for a character hmm. than it is living with one for a long time. Hmm. So it is a greater challenge because uh, depending on where they place the moments, you hmm. really have to make the most of them and quickly within a short window of time in the studio. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Wonderful. Excellent. Yeah. Brilliant. Oh, come on, guys. Surely there's more questions for you to throw at Quinton? No. Okay. Do you want, I can start oh. asking questions if you want. Let's do it. All right. Uh, who's got the microphone? You've got the microphone. What's your name, love? I'm Beck. Where are you from, Beck? I'm from Adelaide. Uh, now, I know Beck is short for Rebecca, right? Yeah. Does everybody call you Beck? Yeah. And when they say that, do they ask you how your albums are doing? No. No? <laughs> no. You don't ever get confused for Beck, the international artist? No, unfortunately not. Really? Really. Because uh, I was hoping you might and you could give me some money. <laughs> I'm a little short. Yeah, so am I. Sorry uh, about that. Forget <laughs> it. Damn it. Oh, my God. Do you have a question? I'll bring it on. Look, they're having a discussion. I love it. You know, she's telling me, I will, I'll give you the money back that I owe you. <laughs> we have a lovely ginger here. What's your name? I'm Annie. Annie. Yes. Lovely. Um, just with the weird directions that you've been given, when before you knew how to interpret them your own way, what's a really weird one you got, and how did you interpret that? Oh, one was... Uh, this time, do it better. <laughs> I was like, seriously? <laughs> um, uh, I honestly can't remember. I've, so some of the strangest things I've heard, um, I've kind of forgotten. But I will say that one of the most unusual things that happened to me is a director during an audition said, I, I don't think I'm getting what I want from you right now, so I'm going to come in the booth, if you don't mind, and kind of give you some different direction. So he came into the booth, and he picked up a broom, and he stood behind me, and I was playing this superhero. He goes, yeah, I need your highs to be higher, and I need your lows to be lower. He's kind of this chubby guy who's drinking coffee with a donut in one hand and a cigarette in the other. And he put it down, and he, put, he goes, stuck the broom, like, right between my legs like I was a witch, right, like flying. He's like, okay, anytime I bring it up, you got to go high. Anytime I bring it down, you got to go low. And I'm standing there going, really? And I was young, and I was naive in Hollywood, so I was just like, okay. And so I would be doing this hero flying through the sky. Yo, oh my goodness, look what's happening here. Everything's going to be fine if you would just look that way. Oh, goodness. <laughs> and by the time we were done and he left, I felt violated, naturally. <laughs> and 
I said, thanks. He goes, you did exactly what I wanted. And I walked out of the studio and apparently one of the other producers chased me down and stopped me. Because I just thought this was normal, like uh, it's Hollywood, right? She's like, I'm so sorry. There was no reason for that man to do that. Please, please forgive us. And I was like, oh, you mean that's not normal? <laughs> like, no, that's beyond not normal. And he's in trouble. I'm like, okay. She goes, anything I can do for you? Coffee and a donut, hold the cigarette. <laughs> You're welcome. Yep. And that's a true story. Yep. Strange, yeah. You can yep. applaud, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Bring it on. Bring it on. Oh. I'm afraid that's uh, all we have time for today. Could everyone please give another round of applause to Quentin Flynn? That's it. Thank you Thank all. You. God bless you. It's great to be in Adelaide. I love you. Come see me. That's it. And we'd also like to remind you all that uh, we've got Quentin Flynn doing his photograph session from 12 to 1, I believe. And then from 1 to 2, he is doing signings. They can be found in the Riverbank rooms, just down the far end of the convention center there. Let's give a hand to the gentleman here, huh? Thank you. And also to the lovely Beck. And now give yourselves a round of applause. Have a grand time. We will see you around. Thank you all for coming. Have a good day.